All right. Well, hello. Welcome, everyone, to the uh, Implementer Sync on January 26th. Uh, got some good stuff to cover. It's probably a lighter crew, so some things may get moved to async. But for anyone who's going to be watching, uh, th thanks. And with that, we'll uh, we'll we'll jump into our agenda. And obviously, if anyone has anything else they need to add to the agenda, please do. But it looks like that's already been happening. Um, and so the first item was me in terms of reviewing previous action items. And I think we got those sort of taken care of. One was definitely uh, Robin posting to the IPFS implementers about specs, which was done. And we're going to talk about that one. And then me was to get Reed set up as the new meeting chair. We got him set up, but then he moved to a different uh, endeavor. So it's back on me. Um, it's possible Yanis may help out here more in the future. But at least for now, um, I will make sure the nuts and bolts are happening. So that's that guy. And then I guess we'll turn it over to you, Robin, for spec site update. OK. Um, so um, I apologize, but I did something horrendous. I put together some slides. Um, but I promise it's it's only four of them so, or five, I forget. So so don't worry too much. Um, this is short. It's just it's just a quick intro of, of what the things that are. I assume you're seeing the screen. I didn't do the normal ritual of like, can you see this? Um, yes, great. Um, and so basically, I wanted to introduce um, the, the, the work that I've been doing uh, around specs infrastructure. Um, it's, it, it's not moving as fast as I'd like to because I, I'm uh, time sharing this with, with a few other priorities, but it, it is moving. Um, and so basically, very simply, the goal of the project is to generally improve our specs stats. Um, and and I define that as having something that looks real, um, and and you know that that it, it, it's been an issue. I know uh, on the on the browsers team, for instance, um, when we go to people and we say, hey, you could you could implement that, and and they say, well, can you can you show us what it what it looks like? And everything sort of looks like a bunch of markdown files, which is perfectly fine, but we could we could make it look um, more 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 vibrant. Um, but the idea is that none of this should be uh, should should be an imposition or pain uh, on anyone working on this. It should be really easy. So the idea is, as much as possible, reuse the existing content, the reusing format, um, make things automatic. Don't don't make people think. So basically, if you know Markdown, um, you learn a little bit of syntax sugar for a few things, and 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 you should be you should be good to go. And also, the, the idea is not to disrupt the the the, the current um, the, the current governance systems. If if they need to be improved, that that should happen separately. I made a prototype. It's up at specs.ipfs.tech. There's nothing wonderful there. It's just a, a examples of how this could work. Um, the code is available uh, on GitHub uh, at Darbin slash uh, And this is not at all final, but I think the prototype shows that it works, shows that it's, it's I think, good enough to, to ship. And so the next step that I'm going to take is to start actually applying this to, 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 to some of our stuff and, and, and really pushing um, specs out there. The core of it, the thing that people who want to produce specs need to know is captured in that document that's on that site called the spec for specs. And basically it explains how you put together a markdown document that works with this. Um, this is if you've used a static site generator. This is built on the on the top of on top of one. It's super basic. Um, there's a bit of metadata. It generates a table of content. It supports you know all the kind of like uh, standard keywords, um, syntax highlighting, a few niceties like that. One of the big core things that are important in specs um, is cross referencing, um, and so basically. Uh, you know, if you want to cite a specific spec, there's a syntax and it will automatically in, in, introduce the, the, the reference, add the proper stuff at the bottom of the spec in the references section, link to things properly. And if you define something, you can, you can have a DFN um, for, for, for that term. And then if you need to reference concepts from other specs or, or constructs from other specs, you can just import the spec and and ref it directly ref the keyword and it will link across everything automatically um again none of this is rocket surgery uh but but the idea is really to have like some basic simple things uh that 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 make everyone's lives hopefully easier 
So what's coming next in this is turning it from a prototype into 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 something real like Pinocchio. Um, and and so right now it's all a big monorepo. I'm going to change that because I've, after having spoken with a whole bunch of people, that doesn't seem to be the, 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 the approach that anyone prefers. It just made my life easier and that's not the point. Um, so so I'm also going to move the, the, the code to the IPFS org. Um, uh, the first thing that I want to do, since it's a smaller number of specs, but they're in the greatest state of disrepair, um, is to is to use this to republish the multiformat spec on the on multiformats.io. Um, right now, there's there's a whole bunch of stuff that's a broken on that site and be missing. Like uh, I think Daniel noticed the other day that that the CID spec isn't linked. Uh, whoops. <laughs> So, so I'm going to use that as, as, as an opportunity to sort of like bang this back into shape um, and then do the same for IPFS. Um, I had, to, I think the gateway specs are probably some of the, the higher priorities here. Um, and I also had a conversation with the lib P2P folks. Um, they have like a, a neat system, but same thing. They'd like, they'd like a website and a converter and the, the syntax they have is almost the same. So this should be, this should be straightforward. So I anticipate doing all of this in Q1. And then moving to the next steps, which is testing infrastructure in uh, in Q2 and, and and forward. And that's about it. That's 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 the tweet, as they say, or well, the toot nowadays. Um, so yeah, thank you. And uh, questions, discussion, welcome. Yeah, that that's awesome. Thank thanks so much for sharing. Um, two two questions. Um, one, when you, I'll sometimes hear developers say. Uh, why do you need a specs website? It just we just need markdown files, and we can link people to that. Um, can you get? And I, I, I have responses to when developers say that to me, but I'm curious, you know, from you having worked in more standards body, like why is not just a repo with a bunch of markdown files good enough? I mean, so first, this is essentially a repo with a bunch of markdown files that is just like a nice rendering layer on top of it. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is, is when, in my experience, at least when you're implementing complex specs and you're implementing them from spec and not from like looking at someone else's code and, and, and stuff like that, it really helps to be able to navigate across, um, across the whole universe of specs much more easily. And so you know, because if you're just like implementing one algorithm, then it's fine, you're, you're in this. But like, if you start looking at like really complex, intricate things that link, that that are very related and modify multiple systems at once, then just that linking thing is, 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 much, is much nicer. Beyond that, you know, it's, it's just, it's also a, a presentational layer for people who are not necessarily developers themselves, but are looking for signs that that this is an interoperable ecosystem um and and you know we're trying to move some of these specs into into formal standards and like just like look, look, it, there's a tinkerbell effect right looking looking real makes it real um because people also evaluate on that but at the end of the day people who just want to use markdown can still just use markdown if you're happy with that don't don't look at the nice looking thing just look at the markdown Cool. Great, great, great answer. On that. I think that's, I would have said some other things, but I just wanted to hear it from, uh, from the master's mouth. So that, that that's awesome. Thank you. The, oh, I, I forgot, I forgot one thing. Sorry. Um, a, a lot of the time people who've told me that they'd rather use Markdown, uh, prefer Markdown because they can use it in dark mode. Uh, that it's, I, I, I wrote the CSS there so that it renders, it renders in dark mode as well. So if you're, if you're, if your OS is set to dark mode, the specs switch to, to render dark mode, small detail, but you know, it helps. Uh, very cool. And when do you just mind describing a little bit of what you mean about uh, testing infrastructure? Sure. Um, so one, I mean, the, 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 the easiest way to explain this is, is, is probably in reference to, to a previous project that, that I worked on. Um, a few years ago, I started something called Web Platform Tests, um, the goal of which was basically to bring in um, all the test suites for uh, all of the core web specs, so you know CSS, HTML, a bunch of APIs, etc., into a single uh, repo with a single um, harness, um, and um, 
that project now has something like a million tests and change. And all of those tests are run in every single browser engine as part of, of, of their CI CD uh, pipeline. And this has like multiple beneficial uh, uh, impacts, right? One is that you really have like strong interop from, from tests. Um, it, and, and second is as a developer, if you find a bug in like, I don't know, like a CSS property doesn't work properly in, in I don't know, Gecko, Firefox, whatever, um, you can immediately look to see if there's a test for it. If there isn't, you, you just make a PR at the test and that immediately goes, you know, it's, it's much better than reporting a bug that has to be triaged and like sits there forever. This is a change that you're making to how things are detected and tested as conformant. And you immediately get this, this thing where people contribute tests because they actually fix, they, they lead to fixes. Because then browser vendors see like a little red square have, you know, show up on the thing, like, oh my God, that, that's broken and they fix it. Um, and in my mind, this is part of getting IPFS to like, you know, yet another level of like industrial strength quality is that if, if like all the, all the implementations or at least all the major ones um, have the same shared test suite um, that, that goes into like deep details and like really like test them and everyone's running that in, in CI CD, we're going to get like interoperability that, that that's going to be much, much better, much more, much more reliable. And also you can play to like people's like slightly, you know, slight the gentle competition things where like, you know, who most tests, like who, 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 et cetera, et cetera. You can also see which specs are more mature. Um, cool. Great. Okay. Th th this is awesome. And so probably the easiest low hanging fruit is something like conformance test around HTTP gateways. Um, yes, because that's just all making HTTP requests and you can validate responses and stuff that you got back. And there's a, probably a bunch of tooling already for, for that thing versus, you know, uh, conformance around bit swap is going to be a more, you know, is a bigger endeavor because we have to figure out the right test harness to do that. Um, right. Got it. Okay. So, I mean, it, so I, I think this, I'm currently thinking primarily at the IPFS layer, uh, the libp2p people have their own testing um, framework and project, and it's already relatively mature. I mean, there's, there's more stuff that they want to add to it. Um, but I, I'm also hoping that, that, you know, web transport transport can help test more things. I mean, we have to figure out how the harness tests things without it being another implementation itself. That's, that's, um, that, that's a little complicated and it's true that it does make gateways e easier to test. Um, uh, but yeah, oh, 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 that, 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 that's the next stuff to fix. I haven't cracked cool. a little bit yet. Yeah. So sounds good, Roman. Is there, um, you, know, if engineers were to fall out of the sky today to help on this, would, would that be welcome and, and useful or is this kind of a one person show right now just to architect and set it up right? Um, I, I mean, if, if engineers fall out of the sky, I can explain the, the prototype I've, I've made around the, I also have a prototype, the testing thing, but it's, it's much, it's in a much like more basic state, um, than the spec stuff. But yeah, if, if, if someone wants to work on this, I can absolutely share where things are, how I think, you know, the, what the next problems are that need, that need solving. Um, I, I don't, I don't need to own this or run it as a, as a one person show. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So, sounds good. I mean, partly just, you know, no commitments here, but a thought is on the Andres steward side, we have the interplanetary developer experience team, the IPDX, which has been, in, which had been investing pretty heavily in test ground um, because yeah. lip P2P is not needing to use test ground right now. And uh, the Andres IPFS team isn't needing it. You know, we've kind of are backing away from test ground at the moment in terms of our direct investment. We're helping empower other groups to to use it. Um, but uh, you know, there is some conversation about how to best repurpose their efforts. And um, given that there is a lot of specking going on with gateways, and especially as it gets pulled into the IPFS.io gateway being run by Saturn, and we're setting, we want to have, we want to make sure all the, the new code that's getting written is conforming. Like I'm wondering if it would be useful for us to apply some of our IPDX team to help get the conformance test suite in place um, 
here to help to validate things. So I, we, obviously we're not going to decide that on this call. I guess I wanted to see if that would potentially be useful. It sounds like there's maybe at least a pathway forward there. I guess mm -hmm. plant that one with you, Lytle. If you think, I know I feel we might be able to pull in extra hands for your gateway track um, of work related to the centralized gateway. So just throwing that out there. We can talk more on that offline. Thanks. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thank you. It looks like Lytle might have been starting to say something and then... <laughs> <laughs> hey you're back oh you're muted now so. oh sorry uh, <laughs> it was not on purpose my connection is flaky today uh yeah i missed some uh, but for sure the gateway conformance is a great candidate because one it's fairly easy to test it in vendor, vendor agnostic way because it's just like http requests to endpoint and we can test a lot of ipfs behaviors uh, by a proxy through that interface so uh, we can test beyond the gateway API itself. We could uh, architect a lot of uh, tests around content address data with just gateway interface. And uh, we are in the process of extracting a reference implementation of the spec, which is like 100% of the spec uh, is implemented in Kubo because the spec is essentially uh, based on whatever we uh, did over the years, but now we are switching to being spec driven and we are extracting the gateway code from Kubo. So anyone will be able to just use the gateway component and implement their own uh, pieces for other things. And that library would be essentially like brag, we'll have a bragging rights that, oh, right now we are implementing 100% of the spec, but over time when the spec evolves, we will have to just like every other library play the catch up to have that like green column on everything just like robin suggested and that's like very very healthy uh, yeah i i'm happy to be involved and uh, gateway is a good candidate for smoke testing all of this like specs uh tests uh because we have uh, probably the most mature uh, specification and understanding uh, and also like uh, if someone wants to implement something they would start with gateway um yeah That was great, Rowan. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know I monopolized a lot of the question time. Did anyone else have questions or comments for Rowan? Uh, I have like a small follow up question to the extraction of multi formats things. Uh, so, like, personally, very often I'm linking people to the specific row in the table CSV file in the multi-codec repo, because that's the source of truth. What's the number for lib P2P key or what's the number for DAC PB? Uh, so my understanding is that like with this uh, ability to reference not only sections, but uh, like specific definitions, we would be able to have like a reference to a specific code point with for, for a codec and be able to utilize it all over the place because it's like literally every spec will have to reference some code from that table. <laughs> so, um, uh, and also like there's a lot of uh, infrastructure that be still require is built on top of that file. So uh, my, my question is uh, to, to Robin is like, do you have any thoughts on when we talk about like, what should be the source of truth? Should that be like the spec and we generate that file for backwards compatibility or do we generate the spec uh, from uh, like the markdown file from that uh, source of truth? What, what what should be the source of truth in that specific case, maybe? So th th there's an open issue about making the source of truth a, a JSON file instead of, uh, of, of, of CSV. Um, and I I like that because it means we can add more data into into that into that source of truth like you know pointing to the specs for these codecs and stuff like that um so i would you know if no one screams i would i would like that source of truth to, to become the the json thing um but in terms of what people are pointed to i would hope that the spec makes it easy for for for, for pointers to work so i i have played uh, part of the prototype in like in uh, with generating um a um a, a table view that's like dynamic and yada yada for for that for that csv i could actually it's true that i could actually add like the the definition markers in that thing 
Um, <laughs> um, I, I could add I could add definition markers in that thing and make it directly referenceable and, and linkable from any other spec anywhere else. Um, and and then the links just take you there. So it's not necessarily the source of truth in the sense of what we edit, but it can be the source of truth in terms of what we link to. And I think that would work. Yeah, that would be super useful. Like even if, if, if for the like MVP of the gateway spec, right? Uh, we would love to reference codes there because we already yeah. have different behaviors for different content types. Awesome things. In Rome, is there anything you need from this group in terms of reviews? Are you like you are you blocked in any way? I'm not. I'm not blocked. Um, you know, I always appreciate input. Uh, obviously, you all have uh, a lot more experience and knowledge of of this community and and the technology. So, like, if you see me doing anything or going in any direction that you think is the right one, you know, just like holler, knock me on the head, and and you know, I'll I'll be more than happy to discuss and change course. But yeah, any input wanted. But otherwise, I'll just like keep keep moving along. Sweet. Well, we're, we're, we're very happy to have you moving along. Th thank you very much. That, that was awesome. So Lytle, Lytle, we'll turn over to you for IP, IP, IP project board review. Uh, okay. Uh, maybe I quickly share my screen. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, assuming my connection works fine, uh, you should see my screen and uh, the board is here. Um, so for, for this week, we, we got uh, IPNS signed records response. Uh, it's been around for a long time. I did not hear any uh, concerns about this. Uh, just heads up that unless there is uh, uh, some like feedback, we will be shipping a reference implementation of this in Kubo 19. Uh, we want to merge this before we extract uh, a gateway. This is like the spec, but they're also like a reference working code in Kubo, which adds uh, this response type to uh, to our gateway. So you are able to fetch original record and verify it, uh, uh, verify signature yourself. That's important for mobile browsers. Um, and uh, I lost my train of thought, but. Um, uh, that uh, will most likely this pull request for Kubo will uh, merge uh, be merged before we extract the gateway to this library. So the library will already have uh, implementation. Um, and yeah, this is more like a PSA, uh, not much to add there. Uh, maybe like one, we want to uh, register this uh, content type just like we did for car and other uh, types. But first, we want to register. Uh, code, uh, like multi-codec for this, as we have a uh, code uh, for things like provider records, uh, store on DHT, uh, and we need uh, the, the code for this. So we are able to put IPNS record in a block in a car. So when you export a car for IPNS path, you not only get full uh, like proof, ability to verify all the uh, hashes from the CID, but you can also verify that this IPNS name points at that CID. So that would be like end-to-end -end ability to verify. Uh, this is like uh, not blocking this thing. It's more like a follow-up work, uh, but just flagging it that that's something we want to enable. So mobile browser will be able to load IP of something from IPNS in a single round trip instead of like four. Um, and the second one- Real, 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 uh, quick, real from, quick, Lytle. So is there yeah. anything blocking registering that right now? Uh, no, not really. I think like we agreed to kind of like freeze the table. So that's like an open question. Uh, uh, do we wait with registration uh, till we move to the, to like the new spec infrastructure or do we like sneak it in? Uh, so to speak, uh, but uh, also uh, it's not urgent. We will have IPIP for adding the, that car export for IPNS. It will be a separate IPIP. Yeah, just kind of like flagging it here that this is part of a wider um, long, long term uh, improvement. Uh, I think uh, for now uh, it's not blocked on anything. The thing, the code registration will be part of the different IPIP uh, when we improve the car export. Okay, all right, sounds good. 
Um, yeah, and the second one is delegated content routing HTTP API. Uh, this is the API that shipped uh, with Kubo 18. Uh, it's the, the same API uh, that uh, is on CID.contact. Um, and uh, I'm flagging, like, it's ready for the final review. I wrote down that there are like, I believe uh, it's mostly done. We moved uh, things that were related to HTTP puts to different IPIP, and this is like red only. Uh, maybe I'll quickly show uh, how the API looks like so folks uh, who are seeing it the first time know what we are talking about. It's this, it's like get, get routing v1 providers. It gives you uh, providers of that CID, uh, and it's just get only. Um, it's mostly ready. The only thing is to clean up things that are not implemented anywhere. Uh, and I wrote, just like I wrote here, it's like remove things that are not implemented. Probably it's a better play than trying to get commitment. It, we can always add those things. And the second one is around uh, uh, ability to Mm, ability to fetch providers for protocols other than BitSwap or GraphSync. Um, uh, I, there, there's also a like comment from me that we should be able to, uh, yeah, right now it's, uh, we pass a string. Uh, the problem is like what this implies that you need to register a code <laughs> and the string and the mapping between a string and a code need to live somewhere. Um, more details like on, on the comments, uh, but I think uh, if anyone who is planning to experiment on the experiment, uh, kind of like if anyone is interested in building something other than BitSwap, uh, should think twice uh, how that thing would be exposed through that API, right? Uh, so that's probably the only thing that we need to figure out before we merge this. Other than that, I think it's ready. Cool. Okay. So thanks. Thanks for the flags, Lytle. This is great. So I believe thought has been given here, but so Gus, do you mind just quickly walking through? So there's a new data transfer protocol called Steve's Awesome Protocol. And I I know about IPNIs. I know it's open to the world. I can start publishing to that. Um, there's no there's no gatekeeping that would prevent me from doing that. Um, what is the expected process that I would take to start using network indexers uh, with my custom data transfer protocol uh you do not need to add it to the spec the specs open-ended uh in terms of the schema of these provider records um the only th the only thing that it requires is uh a name i believe i'm I, I, sorry i'm trying to it's been a while since i looked at this mm -hmm. so I, i'm having trouble even remembering but uh yeah 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 that's 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 exactly the only problem it's like where the mapping like what the, the name the name is a string like what what who maintains a definition of the meaning behind those strings uh we want to avoid a situation when if someone wants to add a new protocol they need to update the spec we also want to avoid situation where people are forced to register a codec because that means uh, we are asking for being dosed by every person that has a free weekend to expand, uh, experiment on the new protocol. Uh, uh, I'm confused about what you're saying then. You're saying that uh, you're concerned that nobody defines these centrally, but you don't want these to be defined centrally? Uh, no, yeah, the, like the specification right now defines there's only BitSwap and GraphSync. There's no information how new transfer protocols uh, should be integrated. Is it like up to implementers to just agree? And it yeah, could be the like spec one... says that, that it's not an exhaustive list. That if you want to use your own, use your own. Uh... Yeah, all you so, do is you just use your own uh, yeah so i would uh, in that case i would add just one sentence to unblock it i uh, okay. also like we we probably at this point we cannot change the current behavior we could augment it and uh, like allow strings from a lip p2p identify protocol uh or we could just add the sentence that if you control both indexer and clients you can agree on any string there uh in that case i, I think it could be unblocked uh, if we add that sentence yeah Okay. 
So, and so noob question here, but let's say I had my, you know, have my new data transfer protocol. Uh, obviously the, that's IPIP right now doesn't, is only about, it talks about the read interface. It doesn't talk about the write interface, but I happen to have access. Or I, I'm using um, CID.contacts like client libraries. So, or so I have some way to write records into their data store or into their database. Um, right now, would they accept records that have Steve's awesome protocol in it? And then would they re uh, return back out to me? If I request, where does a certain, sorry, if I wrote a record that said CIDX is using Steve's protocol and I get that into the indexers, will I get, will I be able to get it back out using the read API? I don't think that they have that implemented. Okay. I think they want to, but mm -hmm. it just hasn't made the, made the cut. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, it may be also like for now, just writing the settings that it's like up if you you can do whatever. And if we write, uh, I know the um, the IPIP with puts will be opened after we merge this one. So I feel it may be good opportunity to like, clarify that behavior. What like if someone if a client knows protocols beyond BitSwap and um, and and graph sync uh should those pro how those protocols should be sent to indexer and that will be a forcing function for us to also like <laughs> figure out how how the reads uh, are uh, uh resolved so what's the so like you you mentioned that we we can't change this like the st the status of this ipip would still be uh i can't remember what the statuses are but sort of like experimental or something right or like not canon not uh, like canonicalized yet, right? Oh yeah, I, I only mean uh, we don't want to break existing clients. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, just we like I, like we only like there's only one implementation of this. So like, really, is it really a spec? Like, I I wouldn't be like like whenever I write these, I'm not super confident that they're actually going to work out until there's like multiple people using them, right? I um, mean, we, so like. <laughs> If they don't, I, I still want to be able to like, if nobody's, if only, there's only like one or two people using it, like we should probably still feel free to just break it, right? If we need to, because it's not like in the state where we would want lots of people using it. Right? Well, it, it kind of depends because in my mind, we should, it, this, we are like building the centralized system. And in that case, every version of Kubo should be evaluated as own implementation because we don't control when people upgrade to a new version of Kubo, right? So uh, if we make a breaking change, we are essentially breaking all Kubo 18 users right now, right? And uh, that's, yeah, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but uh, in, that, in that sense, we have like more than one implementation uh, in the live network on the DHT one. Okay. So for closing this out, uh, I, I think you've already flagged the areas where we need to you know, update or decide. So we can we can do that. Does I know we don't we only have basically Kubo representation here. Is there any concerns with this getting merged once we add some of the the clarity that you've been asking for, Lytle? Uh, I think IROC already committed to implement it, right, Gus? Like, like the the gets. Do they have an implementation? I think, yeah, last or? meeting they said if they had to go implement a delegated routing API, they would go implement this. Okay. Um, that was that was the, I think it was the verbal statement. I don't know if that shows up in the IPIP. Mm -hmm. IRO? Yeah. Yeah, IRO. Yeah, there was a verbal, like, it, it was cool. a conditional, like, if it's that, if it's really as easy as we say it is to implement, then sure, they'll go implement <laughs> it. Uh, <laughs> but I don't think Brendan ever got a chance to look carefully at it, but... I, I don't see much risk there. Okay. Yeah. I also think like uh, Gus had a good point that we like, we will have to have prescribe uh, detail like the details need to be fleshed out when uh, when we do puts anyway because we will have you know clients who will be putting other stuff than BitSwap. So I, I think it's uh, it's not that uh, big of a deal. At this point, honestly, like it's like the the spec is more of a formality, right? 
given the conversation we just had where it's like it's already shipped yeah yeah we want to like unblock uh, discussion on puts so i i propose we uh we add a one paragraph that it's left to implementers to handle other protocols for now and then we'll move this discussion to to the other one just so we can merge this uh, uh in alignment yeah this seems to be like the kitchen sink where anyone with any content routing requests just drops a comment on this PR. <laughs> yeah, but that can, kind of like in the production, this system will be a kitchen sink because we will have, uh, you know, it will get more popular. People will realize, oh, there's this indexer with accept puts and it often accelerates my resolution. It's faster than the HD. So I use the HD only as a fallback. Uh, and we people will start using it for storing information about their custom uh, transfer protocols uh, if we allow it, right? And my understanding is that we don't want to be gatekeepy and only have bit swap and graph sync. Um, so yeah, but that will be probably a discussion on this call <laughs> once we have that other IPIP. Um, yeah. So, so okay. probably we'll move it asynchronously, Steve, uh, cool. uh, just great. so we can uh, merge it uh, in the form that we discuss. Yeah. Cool. Okay, very, very good. Um, and so is there any is there anything on deck that we want to make sure we're queuing up people for for next time? I don't, I don't think anything else is mature enough. Yeah, I, I mean, know, I, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I know that we will kind of like proactively flagging we may have a discussion about extending the car export endpoint in the gateway spec mm -hmm. currently we support exporting full cars and that's it uh, but those are full cars only for a specific cid without parents if you request a file or something like that uh, the saturn work will most likely require us to figure out a way uh, to return partial cars with some set of predefined selectors, mm -hmm. uh, but that's uh, TBD. We may have uh, IPIP draft within the next few weeks, maybe next call, maybe in two calls. And uh, probably that will be uh, prioritized. So that most likely will be the first one, unless anything from the queue will uh, get uh, like sponsor to get it to the point when it's ready to for a final review but on my end i i think only yeah. the partial car re, uh, export will be happening anytime soon okay so that, that that's kind of what i was thinking what now sorry if i'm conflating things i i thought one of our key things here was also the car ordering uh, yeah so the 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 partial car export right mm -hmm. it's it's linked, uh, and that still uh, depends on the details of uh, the architecture of the centralized gateway and if we'll be caching blocks or if we'll be just doing pass-through streaming of car streams. If we are doing streaming all over the place, there are some types of clients which will require blocks in a car stream to arrive in a specific order. Mm -hmm. So they can be deserialized on the fly without having to be cached in memory or on disk. And it, that's where ordering uh, becomes important. There's also like IoT devices and other use cases which would benefit from this, but uh, mm -hmm. prioritization depends if this is uh, important for the centralizing IPFSIO gateway or not. And at this point, I'm not sure. It may be part of that uh, IPIP, or it may be a separate IPIP for a separate parameter. Okay, but for for light clients that want to have verifiable retrieval, are, don't they you know, and to not get um, to not get taken advantage of? Don't they need ordered car responses? Uh, that depends if they can uh, cache blocks. If they can, if uh, okay. Uh, Order, so the, what ordering gives you, ordering and ability to control duplicates gives you ability to not cache blocks and just discard them as soon you consume them. Okay. Uh, but if you if we if you have enough storage to store blocks, even if it's temporary or memory, uh, then you don't need to care about ordering. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's mo mostly uh, a trade off uh, for for the Saturn. CBD. Um. Okay, cool. Okay, so we'll get clear. So, so, so just for 
those who aren't aware and for anyone listening to the call, um, the so there's a few things being referred to. I just want to quickly page people in on real quick. The IPFS.io gateway as it exists today is going to continue or that service uh, is going to continue to exist. The goal is to basically hire out Saturn rather than um, our whole Inquinix uh, setup that we have today. Um, and so that is a major push for engineering within the PL Andres group. Um, and so that when we talk about decentralized gateway, et cetera, that's what we're referring to. There are, you know, there's a lot of docs being written on this on the fly. I think there's pushes to get those more public. So we'll make sure that those get added to the notes as soon as they are public or certainly for next week. But that's a little bit of what we're referring to. And that's what's also consuming a lot of the Andres IPFS stewards is helping make that effort happen. And particularly all the interface points that they are well that they are that they are spec so that's where we're going to see expansions to the gateway spec and where there is code being written ideally that this is code in a library form so that it's uh, more reusable and shareable and we can have conformance tests etc around it um so that's that's a little bit of the backstory on what we're talking here so other spec things for us like uh double hashing etc in the dht or in indexers are like lower priority at the moment until we unblock this decentralized gateway work, which is why that's probably the next IP IPs that you'll see the Andres IPFS stewards bringing forward because uh, it's related to that work. Yeah, yeah. And the idea is that if we need to improve uh, things like car, sending cars over HTTP, uh, we already have an API for that on the gateway. Uh, we want to avoid uh, creating new APIs. Uh, so if we spend time, it would be useful to uh, improve the public uh, interface. So it could be used beyond our own infrastructure. Uh, but uh, yeah, details TBD. And for sure, if anything related to car export needs to be changed, that will be a public IPIP. We'll for sure discuss it on this meeting. Oh, yeah, so that sounds good. Th thank you. And then the only other thing spec wise, I was aware of I, was the Unix FS you know, backfill that Hugo has been driving. It's been open for a long time. Did anyone by chance get to have a fresh set of eyes on that? So we can, I, I would love to, if I just, if I had an open hour to do it, but I, I know I haven't, and I don't want to be the blocker. Um, yeah, so, sadly also I did not have time, uh, but we probably sh uh, should, like the next next time we discuss we we talk maybe with more folks, yeah. Uh, we 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 should like commit to some date. I'm not saying we should we need to rush it, but at least mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to find time myself to uh, to look at it again because I reviewed it last year and now it probably needs another pass. Okay, I'll put that as an action item for next time to get someone to commit. <laughs> Uh, very good. So that's the end of the agenda that I'm seeing. Did anyone have anything else they wanted to bring up? A Kubo 18 shift. Oh, yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> Kubo 18 shift. Uh, I guess really snow. Uh, yeah, you can go to our discussion forums or this type of SIO or Kubo repo. Re read the release notes. They are linked. Uh, there are some improvements around uh, content routing. We also have support for DuckJSON and DuckSibor on gateways, which was requested since uh, forever. Uh, uh, faster gateway listings. Uh, we cleaned up uh, configuration. A bunch of stuff is now auto scaling. Uh, if you had issues with resource manager, you may now have different issues or now, depending on your luck level. Uh, so feedback welcome and ipfs desktop should roll out either this week or in the beginning of the next week we usually uh, have uh, a delay now we had an artificial delay but it will roll out shortly thank thanks a lot for that call that's a good point i think just in general i'll make sure we have a releases announcement section at the top of, so that iro or anyone else has a chance to to share um, I guess the other thing, imp you know, implementation wise, uh, I believe the Helia, the JS implementation that is getting worked on, I think they're doing their first demo, public demo on Monday. Um, 
you know, don't don't come in expecting to be odd per se, but it's just more to get in the cadence of showing the progress that's happening. Um, so I think that's all on Luma. Um, I will I will I'll check that and then add that to the notes. Great. Well, thank thank you everyone. I guess we'll break here, give people the remaining time back. We'll talk more within the next within two weeks. So thanks again. Ciao for now. Bye. Bye. Bye.